Ever wish you could walk around inside of your favorite TV and movie homes? Well, on this channel, you can. Today, we'll be exploring every nook and cranny of the Brady Bunch home. I've made a tour before, but not like you're going to see it today. Hi, I'm Marina Coates. I have a degree in architecture and an obsession with set design. Welcome to Behind the Scenes, where we get up close and personal with all your favorite TV and movie homes. Many of you have already viewed my previous version of the Brady Bunch home tour. If you liked that episode, and judging by the views, it looks like you did, you're going to love this one. Get ready for an all-new experience with both enhanced technology and updated accuracy. Let's get started. We'll begin with an overhead view of the main floor to help us get our bearings. The main entrance is here. This is the living room. Mike's den is over here. There's a back hallway here under the stairs. Later, we'll do some exploring back there. This is the dining room with the kitchen here, the family room is here, and Alice's room and the laundry room are back here. The living room. For those who don't know, no scenes were ever filmed in the actual real life home. All interior and backyard scenes were shot in a studio. We only got to see little glimpses of the fourth wall in the living room. Just a reminder, the fourth wall is the wall on a set where the cameras were placed for filming, the wall we don't get to see. In this episode, we see a TV on that wall, and in this scene, we see a china cabinet on the wall next to the dining room table. In the entrance, we see a cabinet, a vase, a plant, and a chair. The vase is actually a green glass punch bowl. And how do I know this? For that tidbit of information, we give thanks to Scott Schultz, an expert on all the various Brady Bunch props, and who, in fact, owns and displays many of those same iconic pieces in his own home. Lucky guy, right? He has graciously allowed me to use his images of those props for this episode. It's also what helped me get the home so accurate this time around. There's a link to his Instagram account below where you can study them all to your heart's content. I know I did. Here we see the amazing fireplace with the two chimneys, one for the living room side and one for the side in the den. I love how you can see through the fireplace into Mike's den. To the left of the fireplace are the iconic Brady stairs. One of the areas I always wished to see more of was the space under and behind the stairs. We saw people back there but never got to see what their view would be like from that perspective. Today, I'll take us back there and let us gaze out from underneath. I chose to put two doors back in that hallway, and here's why. We know that in the Brady Bunch Christmas TV movie, two grandkids head back to that hallway saying they're going to the bathroom. There is space on the right between the hall and Mike's den to put a bathroom, so I did just that, putting a door on that side. So why did I also place a door on the other side? Well, that all goes back to the first tour I made of this home. We get some good clear views of the hallway on that side, and there's no door there. So my first tour, I didn't include one. However, I received many comments from my viewers requesting that I put one there, and here's the reasoning. In a couple of episodes, we initially see people in the laundry room, and then in the next scene, they're shown coming out from under the stairs. So there must have been a door there, even though none is ever shown. So I added one, both to appease my viewers, and because in a real home, it would definitely make sense to have one there. Thanks, viewers. You keep me on my toes and continually remind me that I'm not the only one who's fascinated by these kinds of details. Notice this large piece of artwork at the bottom of the stairs. Scott Schultz also provided a website link to an excellent article that discusses all of the artwork in the Brady Bunch home. That helped me so I could add a lot of those items in this updated tour that I wasn't able to include in the original tour. I'll post the link to that website below where you can learn all about this beautiful artwork at your own leisure. 
Above this painting, we see the stunning configuration of red, yellow, and blue glass that is a takeoff on the work of the famous artist Piet Mondrian. You've likely seen examples of this artist's work on everything from dresses to the Green Acres set to even the Partridge family bus. And now we'll tour the main room of the Brady home and at long last get a good look under those stairs. By the way, the set design changed so much over the course of the series, I had to choose a season and stick with it. I chose season three to base my model on. As we took the tour, you may have noticed the placement of the dining room table. It doesn't sit parallel to the stairs, but rather is at an angle following the line of the sliding doors. The three sets of sliding doors are placed at angles like this, the two outside ones pivoting from the center one in the kitchen. This dining room set is from the American of Martinsville collection and includes a matching china cabinet. They also had other American of Martinsville pieces situated throughout the home. Once again, these images and the accompanying information are provided courtesy of Scott Schultz. Mike's Den. Mike's Den is my favorite TV den of all time. You can definitely see the fingerprints of an architect in its design. Granted, there was no solid privacy wall on this side, only shutters that he could close but I assume that the set designers did that on purpose to illustrate how seriously he took his fatherly role, welcoming all of the necessary intrusions of family life, which we as Brady viewers know happened quite frequently. When the popular HGTV renovation of this home was happening, I was lucky enough to be invited to tour the home, once when it was still under construction and then again when the project was fully completed. One of the highlights for me was getting to sit at Mike's desk in the den. While I use a computer in real life rather than a drafting board as Mike did, I couldn't help but imagine how sweet it would be to drop my homes in that iconic setting. Another fun thing happened on my travels to the HGTV premiere. As I was waiting to board the plane to Burbank, of all the people in the world, who did I run into? Mike Lookinland, who of course played Bobby. After exchanging some talk about the premiere, we separated as we boarded the plane. But when we landed, as I was exiting the plane, he caught me and graciously offered a ride to the hotel where the premiere was taking place. So I got to arrive at the event place with a Brady. Pretty cool, right? What a nice guy. What often makes TV homes so interesting and part of the design magic of this home are the different levels present within the structure. The Brady home is no exception. There are steps down from the entry into the living room, 
and then another set of steps up to the platform under the stairs, and then steps back down to enter the den. Some other interesting elements of the den. These are some images of the fourth wall in the den that we rarely got to see. This is the wall behind his drafting table. Notice there's no window. But what do we see on the outside in that same place? A window. Just another one of those little discrepancies that is fun to catch. Let's tour Mike's den now and then head on to the kitchen. I have just added a new print of the Brady Bunch home to my online shop. It features an overhead view of the home on the bottom and a familiar view of their living room on the top. And as with all the other TV home prints in the store, it's available both framed and unframed and in different sizes. You'll find a link below to all of my merchandise. Now, on to the kitchen. There are few things more familiar or more orange than the Brady Bunch kitchen. I actually got to stand in this completed room during the HGTV tour. As a mother of six kids myself, as I took that room in, I couldn't help but notice how well that kitchen would have actually worked for a family of that size. HGTV did an amazing job. Every detail was there, right down to Alice's recipe on the chalkboard. Upon entering the kitchen, you see two square wood-framed lights here. They had a table here with shutters behind it that open into the family room. Their avocado-colored fridge was here, with a sink here and another smaller sink back here. The double wall oven was here with what appears to be an indoor grill next to it, but which we never actually got to see them use. And of course, their stovetop was here, where we often saw Alice whipping up her amazing meals. Scenes that took place in the kitchen. Alice, distracting Greg with food to keep him from finding out his rival, is in the living room with Marcia. A day of switching places when Mike discovers just how hard household duties can be. And of course, Peter delivering the famous line in his best Humphrey Bogart voice after discovering the dinner menu for the night. Pork chops and applesauce. Now we'll take a spin around the kitchen and then it's on to the family room. If you love getting the inside scoop on these homes, you might be interested in my new Patreon account. I show you the process I go through from start to finish with each home, my thoughts, my insights, my struggles, and my discoveries as I try to piece these homes together. It should feel as though we're tackling the project together, 
which means I'll even ask your advice from time to time. You'll also get to see the tours of the rooms before I publish the episode, on their own, without narration. You'll get to see the models in process as I begin work on them, views of every wall in every room, interviews I've done with cast members, and much more, all for only $5 a month. So if you want to be an insider, just access the link to my Patreon account below this video. Now, on to the family room. I love the L-shaped sofa with the corner end table. People who actually had this set growing up have told me that the sofa could be used as a bed, too. I adore the autumn colors that go so well with the rest of the home. They had a round games table in the center of the room with a red felt top here, a stereo here, and an olive green wingback chair in this corner. They also had a TV over here that they would pull out when the family wanted to watch TV. Some scenes that took place in the family room. Jan typing up her most popular girl acceptance speech. Mike, Carol, and Alice discovering the kids on a TV show as the Silver Platters. And lots of family discussions. We'll now walk around the family room and then head over to Alice's room. After that, we'll tour the whole main floor and the backyard. I discovered an artist, Michelle Gersa, who's done remarkable paintings of the Brady Bunch home as well as other homes. I'll post a link below for you. And just so you know, I'm getting no compensation for this. I just simply love her work and I thought you might too. I even bought one of her creations for myself. This beauty from one of my all-time favorite movies, Rear Window. Alice's room and the laundry room. The laundry room was right through this door in the kitchen. From these images, we can see that Alice's room was next to the laundry room. She had a bed here and a dresser here. We never got to see the fourth wall, so I used that to give her a closet and a bathroom. We'll walk through the laundry room now and into Alice's room and then take a tour of the entire main floor in one walkthrough. Then we'll head on to the backyard where we'll discover some surprising information about the exterior of the home. What is it about the Brady home? Why in the world was it so popular and still popular even today? I don't think it was any accident that HGTV selected this particular home to renovate. They knew that people would tune in and in big numbers and with enthusiasm to see this home. They knew that it would be a sensation, but why? It's more than just nostalgia. Something about this home hits people in a much deeper way. It's reportedly the second most photographed home in the USA, trailing only the White House in popularity. Nostalgia represents a type of longing for the past,
But this is a different kind of longing. A longing not just for the past, but for something in that past that feels a need, feels a hole, maybe even a hole that we didn't even know needed filling. Something that goes far beyond brick and mortar, beyond architecture and even design. I know that when I bring these classic homes back to life, as much as they gratify me for their beauty, that something else usually touches me as well. Something that's actually very hard to put into words. It's hard to describe because it's multi-layered and filled with memories and thoughts and emotions. And for lack of a better word, longing. Longing for what? Comments from my viewers provide some clues to this. Viewers said things like it helped them when they were going through hard times. It gave them hope. Or their family was less than ideal and that the Brady family began to feel like their family. Or at least it showed them what a family could be. And it gave them hope that maybe they could build a family of their own someday, one that could be like this, stable, loving, and caring. Each week, if only for a short while, they found a safe haven. So yes, the house is amazing. The set designers truly created a phenomenal home. But the home's popularity goes far beyond that. It represents something more, something so tangible that viewers could almost feel it. It represents the best of what family life could be. Life's never perfect for anyone, but for 20 minutes each week, it seemed like maybe, just maybe, it almost could be. When I posted my original tour of this home four years ago, I was surprised to see this tweet from Maureen McCormick, who played Marcia. Next up, the backyard. The backyard is actually a side yard. I'll show that coming up. So many different events took place here. Everything from a dunking booth, to a Thanksgiving Day play, to mowing the AstroTurf lawn. I loved the garage the design of it and how open it was. It may not have been very practical for storing all that a family that size would need, but it sure was good looking. As we walk through the backyard, keep your eye out for some of the items featured in various episodes. Let me know what you find in the comments. After this tour, we'll move on to the exterior. Ever wonder what the outside of the Brady house would look like if it actually matched the interior? Well, you're about to find out. Don't forget to subscribe to keep seeing tours like this of TV and movie homes in the future. Up next, the exterior. And what would it look like if it matched the interior? The exterior. What would the exterior of the Brady home really look like if it actually matched the interior? We're used to seeing this home as the exterior. And a few years ago, HGTV was able to keep the outside of the home looking like this as they renovated the inside. However, in order to keep the exterior looking the same, they had to put some of the rooms in different places than they were on the show. Of note, they moved the parents' bedroom over here and placed Greg's attic bedroom here. We're shown a one-story home here, 
But as we all know, on the inside, there's a flight of stairs there. I thought you might like to see what the home would look like if the exterior actually matched what was going on inside. This is a cut through of the home showing where the rooms are on this side. And this is a cut through of the home showing where the rooms are on this side of the home. The front of the home in actuality would be quite narrow versus what we're shown on TV as being the exterior. And Mike's den ends here with a window, as if that's the end of this part of the home. Yet on the exterior, we're shown the home continuing. So here's what the front of the home would actually look like. And here's what this side of the home would look like if it matched the interior. And here's the other side. And this is the back of the home, the side that has the parents' bedroom. And their backyard is here, which is really a side yard. Interestingly, on the show, all of the upstairs bedrooms are shown at one point or another as looking out onto the side yard. But as you can see, in reality, none of them would. So what's become of the home now? Unfortunately, due to the home being in a residential neighborhood, it was never zoned or approved for tours to the public. HGTV currently listed the home for sale for $5.5 million. Do any of you have a little pocket change to purchase it? If so, invite me over sometime. I'll be redoing and updating my tours of the Brady's upstairs. But for now, if you haven't seen the tour of the upstairs I did four years ago, check them out on this channel. But as for today, that's a wrap. See you next time on Behind the Scenes.